And here we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to BWTM Sports. If you haven't hit the subscribe button already, please do hit that subscribe button. Your views uh, and your support really matter to us and we really appreciate it. And we have to thank those who've helped and subscribed to the channel from 4,000 last month. We're now closing on five. Well, according to YouTube, we've already hit 5,000 subscribers. So thank you so much. Last month, we were on 4,000 subscribers. This month, we're on 5,000 subscribers. So we do really do appreciate your support and your viewing. We really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Can't do it without you guys and girls. Second announcement to make. Now, I don't know if it's me, but the camera does look a lot better. This camera, I said that we're going to do an update, and we got an update today with this camera. This camera is the um, Logitech um, 9333, it's a 933C, or 93E, in fact. Logitech 933E picked it up uh, a couple of days ago via um, online, got it for a fantastic deal for. Uh, just 30 pounds actually so i mean they're going i think they're going shots about 89 90 pounds but uh so far the picture looks pretty good look pretty crisp so that's a positive thing and uh obviously it's good for the channel howdy eugene eugene you want to come in the room and have a chat with me be nice to have you in the room we can talk about hay versus Bellew, and you can uh have a good laugh about it let me get you in the room and you can keep me company Eugene is, for those who don't know, Eugene's our European, Eastern European correspondent. We're just going to try and get Eugene in the room as well. Let me get my man Eugene in the room. Um, bear with me a second. It was great to have him in the room. Um, his views and his thoughts. Uh, okay, I'm just going to... Jess... The link is there, my friend. So feel free to jump in and join in. I'll wait. Just sent you the link. So for those just joining, just waiting for our Eastern European correspondent to jump in the room and have his views on this Hay versus Bellew weigh in and final reaction. Well, the first thing is it's really good to see that both guys have come in, in good shape. Hay, five pounds lighter, 15 stone, I think 15 stone, 10 pounds. Last time he came in was 16 stone, one pound. And I didn't check Belly's weight. I think he's 15 stone, 15 stone five or something like that. So, yeah, both uh, both would be considered big guys, fairly big guys beforehand, but not anymore. In the, in the realm of 18, 19 and 20 stone, these guys are quite light considerably. But uh, both guys in good shape. David Hay always looks in immaculate shape. Uh, significantly this time looking at hay his body and his his, his features he looks more uh, everything looks more together it did, doesn't look as top heavy this time he doesn't look like he's been doing weight bodybuilding this time around so that's a good thing to see from hay um value is good to see him in shape he'll never be he'll never have six packs like david hay as much as he wants to and you know he wants to you know he really wants to have to look like david hay he would love to look like david hay you know, um, but it is what it is. Yes, Eugene, good to see you in the room, my friend. Wait a second. Yes, we have yeah. your camera as well. Yeah, had a haircut. You like it? Um, well, I certainly won't be getting one of those. <laughs> I think you're, you're you're more likely to get one of those. You're more likely to get one of mine than I'm likely to get one of yours. Uh, maybe in twenty years. <laughs> So how are you doing, my friend? No, I'm doing great. The spring is finally here in Toronto. We've yes. been sitting here for five months of winter. Yeah. We're all tired of it. You know, it's uh, it's a thought that Canadians really love the winter, but actually everyone is annoyed by it, and we just kind of put up with it. Okay, well, at least you've got some good weather now. Yeah, and uh, I'm also have my tickets in line for Stevenson Jack because it's happening in Toronto. 
Oh, wow. You, you are so fortunate to be able to see that. Yeah. But actually, it's uh, it's the first boxing match on uh, Air Canada Arena in 18 years. Wow. Yeah, they. I opened the map in uh, Air Canada Center, and they didn't have the layout for boxing events because it hadn't been happening for so long. They back in the day they didn't even use the online, you know, map. It. Okay. So it's it's kind of funny, but yeah, let's get back to, you know, uh, even though Stevenson is kind of relevant to this fight. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I know you had to add that, didn't you? Yeah, I, I kind of had to. I think most people who don't like Tony Bellew mentioned the Stevenson factor. Oh, no, I actually like him. I'm kind of, you, you know, I'm enjoying the fact that he believes in himself so much to the point where it actually manifests, you know. Well, it's nice to see Bellew believe in himself. He always has, he's never been short of a word and, uh, you know, he believes himself. So he's got reason to believe himself as well. So, hey, um, going to ask you your thoughts on a few things. By the way, what do you think of the camera? Oh, the image looks way nicer. Yes. I uh, also like your colorful background. Oh, don't don't <laughs> get that boat blown. We only use it for now. Did you manage to see the video uh, we did of setting up the studio for BWTM? Yeah, yeah. Perhaps, yeah, I've seen it. What do you think? I'm waiting for it. Oh, you haven't seen it? No, uh, I've seen the video. I'm waiting for uh, it in action. I haven't. Yo, Wait, you okay. use it already? Yeah, we're still. No, I'm still, the studio's only next door, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm waiting to see it in action. Okay, well, that, that will be coming shortly or soon. But we've got this camera now, which is good. It's, uh, it's a very good picture. I'm really impressed with it. Yeah, I think the, the only thing is uh, the next one is um, fixing the feed, like the internet, because sometimes the camera is really good. It's just the, you know, transmitting of the can you, picture can, itself. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah. Good. I just need to, I've got a microphone as well, but I'm, that microphone just looks funny sitting on the couch with a microphone set up. I, I, no, we'll wait to get the video. Get the microphone and the equalizer. We'll do that when we get in the studio. But for now, it's the boxing. We're just waiting for more people to come in the room and share their thoughts as well. Oh, we've got people in the room. Stevenson KO's Jack within eight rounds. The hype train ends here. The whole day says Bob Sanders. And J124, prime hate annihilates mm. value in one round. Davy isn't what he was. Belly was smart. Court hay. At the perfect time, Gassy Evan Usyk would destroy Bellew. <laughs> I think people would pay to watch that happen, to be honest. Um, well, um, Hearn, I think uh, Hearn is the Bellew's uh, promoter, right? Yes. said that uh, should Bellew come out victorious again, they would push for the winner of uh, World Boxing Super Series. Which isn't a smart move. You just beat up a guy who was kind of a big deal at cruiserweight at some point in his life but now you're jumping in the top guy uh, top guy in the division which is like uh, either if it's uh, alexander Usyk, then he just went through gassiev and won if it's gassiev it means he just <laughs> it's like, I won. It's just, you you can't win with that matchup sorry it's not happening how would you rather, how would you, which fight would you rather see Tony Bellew in? Gassayev or Usyk? I know who I prefer. Well, I would say Gassayev. Yeah, I was going to say Usyk too. <laughs> listen, we know what's going to happen with Usyk, right? Yes. It's, uh, it's pretty much exactly what he does, except uh, Bellew will show a little bit even less skill against him because the guy is... You know, he's not going to be stranding there, trading or trying to blow him out in a few rounds as uh, Hay did. So, yeah, Gassiev will put him in the world of pain. I thought you were a Tony Bellew fan, though. I like him, but I'm realist, you know, I just yeah, don't but, see it happening. But if I was going to manage between the two fighters, I'd rather see Bellew fight Usyk for his own safety rather than Gassiev, who's just a destructive monster of a guy. I want to be entertained. Can you blame me? I want to be entertained. Who's it entertaining, isn't he? See, when he goes entertaining, he actually looks not as good as what I like him for. Right. So, you know, going to have a compromise here. 
Oh dear. Well, okay. So, did you get to see the weigh-in? Uh, yeah. What yeah, I did. I think uh, that Hay looks like he's there for 12 rounds. He finally took it seriously because last time, the last time it didn't look like he did. Yeah. And it bite him right in the ass and it, you know, it chew a big chunk of his ass. Um, and Bellew, I don't see Bellew doing much of a, you know, doing something different this time. Mm-hmm. I think he's gonna come and be be Bellew. <laughs> yeah, I don't like I, I said this last night. I don't see Tony Bellew doing anything different. I just think he'll be the same Tony Bellew because he play he trained his arse off for the first fight. David Hay, on the other hand, we could say, like I said, it's probably twenty or thirty percent of Hay we didn't see because he came in the fight not prepared for a fight, first and foremost. And secondly, was completely dismissive of Tony. He went in there thinking, oh, I'll just blow this guy in a couple of rounds. Cha, just a step aside. Let me just blow I'm not this guy in two rounds and I'll go back and have a cup of tea afterwards. So that was the mentality of David Hay. And when you've got that mentality coming into camp and you've got that mentality through camp and you've got that mentality after camp and you've got that mentality getting to the arena at the press conference and then you get that mentality in the ring and then you find out you hit the guy with a right hand, he's still there. And uh, you try to swing from the houses and he's still there. And then, you know, he starts to tag you with some good shots. He's still there. And then he gets off the canvas after you drop him. He gets off the canvas and he's still there. And he's kicking you back with punches and he's still there. You're not prepared for that. You didn't train for that. You didn't prepare for a war. This time round, David knows what to expect. You think he knows what to expect. Yeah, well, if we rationalize, we kind of think that, okay, David Hay got where he is with a little bit of thinking at least, right? So if he faced this guy and he sees that he's not like a walkover, he's going to prepare properly, he's not going to hop into it with injury, right? Because uh, the whole thing with the twisted Achilles, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, Was uh, about you know, believing that he can finish it at any point he likes. He did say that, didn't he? I don't also like this thing about, well, you know, I want to punish him. I want to punish him. I I don't know about all this punishing business. I'd like to see Dave Hay get in there, get the job done and get out of there. Because that may spectacularly backfire as well. Oh, yeah. And he needs it. If uh, Hay is going to have any future, like any future in boxing, he needs that win because if he loses, that's it. Like you, you cannot put him anywhere in the heavyweight division, and he's definitely not going back to cruiserweights. You know, he needs it like air. But yeah, yeah you're right about him like uh, being in a nightmare. You know, when um, when you hit the guy and he's still there, you, you try to do other thing, he's still there. It's kind of like a nightmare, right? You're running away from the guy, you cannot break away from him. You, you're hiding behind a closed door, he get, goes through, you know? But that's a, but the thing is, that's a nightmare he created. He created his own nightmare scenario. It's not a case of he fought his best, he trained his best, he gave it his best shot and went in there. Now, the other side of it could be David Hay really did give it his best shot. He really did take it seriously. He did really did put it in the training camp. And that is the best that David could offer in 2018. How about that for scenario? Well, that's a really dire but, scenario because it would it would make him completely washed up. That's my point. Now, why what about that? What about he but his body can't do any more than what we saw there? And that was the best of him a year ago. That's the best he could get out of his body then, it, it, last year. Maybe, what about that as a scenario? That could be a possibility, but see, the problem is David Hay was out for quite some time. I think uh, he had an injury, right? Yeah, supposedly he had an injury. And then he returned in 2015, I believe. Yep. And bit up a guy who wasn't practically anyone he just had uh, an undefeated record we can count him as undefeatable uh yeah so he bit up that guy 
and we couldn't really see whether like we couldn't uh, judge on any of those performances whether that was it you know we couldn't judge that uh, um hey cannot do previous things anymore the david hay we saw in those two fights was like do you remember um fight night champion where you could move up and down the weight division Oh, okay. You know that though in the in fight that champion you could oh not fight that champion fight that I think round four and you could actually move you could fight from middleweight and you can move up to heavyweight. David Hay looked like he was he moved from middleweight up to heavyweight and he put on loads and packed on loads and loads of weight. He just looked big and he just didn't suit David Hay. Um, when he came back those two fights and then he fought Bellew and again he looked like a weightlifter. He really looked like a weightlifter. Now he looks like the David Hay. That I think everybody can recognize and remember, body wise, body structure wise. Well, and David, as I remember, had some stamina issues. So having all that muscle is kind of detriment detrimental to all his boxing. Counted. So, yeah. So, yeah. So at this point, I, I'm expecting for it to be a better performance. But you see, the thing that Bellew did uh, on press conference, right, when he shoved him over, uh, I believe that Bellew is capitalizing on that idea that he won once and he's kind of like, um, you know, a dark cloud over Hay. He's just, you know, uh, putting pressure on him because Bellew is really a turning point for Hay, you know. And he understands it, and there's a lot of pressure on him. So if he keeps it in his head all the time, it can limit him. It's the one time in David Hayes' career he can't spin it. He can't spin it. Because he spins a lot of other things. He can't spin this one. He got beat by Tony Bellew. That's it. Yeah. He can't yeah. say, well, kind of, I was, no. You got beat by Tony Bellew. That's it. The one, the one saving grace is that injury, that Achilles injury. Yeah, but now he took a time off uh, because they said they had another injury, right? Yeah. So he took the time off. So apparently he's ready, he's healthy, he's in the corner. That's it. Okay. I just want to mention some people that are in the room because uh, they're there and they're, they've got lots to say. So we better address what they've got to say. DJ Six says, quality picture. Thank you, Mr. Slick. Appreciate it. Uh, Belly thinks he's a big puncher. It's hilarious, says Bob Sanders. Uh, J124 says, I don't have anything against Bellew. It's the hype around him as if he's anything special. He's not. Uh, Phil Half, shout out to Phil, by the way. I've got a, I've got a feeling Bellew's going to get knocked out badly. Oh, dear. Which J124 says, which version of Hay is this, by the way? Hey, 10 <laughs> point zero. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, updates and patches are keep coming up. Yeah, it's, it's update. It's still updating. Um, they might have, they might end up coming out with a, instead of Windows, they'll be hey two two point two point nine. Yeah, you get up updates on your yeah. Windows. It says Twi <laughs> twisted Achilles edition. Yeah, <laughs> the Windows version. Yeah, Bellu update version. Bellu update two version. Achilles uh, version or. Toe gone version. Value 3.0. This uh, this time is final. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, 10.0. This is the best version possible ever. And then a month later, you come up with no, this is the best possible version ever, but we've updated it further. Yeah, optimized. <laughs> Sometimes they're. They have a 10, but then they go optimizing without switching to the 11 or whatever. Hey, hey listen, he'll put Bill Gates out of business with all these updates. No, he already skipped the 9. <laughs> oh, when the computer's not working, why don't you call it the Bellu virus? <laughs> <laughs> your, your system has been corrupted by Bellu. <laughs> the, the bank robin virus. <laughs> Your files have been robbed once, but if you install a Hey update, it won't get robbed again. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear, never mind. Oh dear. Um, 
Uh, Phil Harv, uh, Bob Sarn says to Phil Harv, hopefully so that the uh, so that both of them can retire. Um, Bob at J124, uh, 88.3, I think. <laughs> Number 88.3 says Bob Sarn in terms of the versions. Um, J124, it's a shame because I think Hay at his best gives Wild and AJ serious problems, in my opinion. I think he gives both of them problems until they land on him. Mm -hmm. No, Luis Ortiz gives everybody problems until he's not. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, Phil Half says, you know, buds. And then uh, Bob Sanders is true. He says, coping on I says, uh, at J124, agree. Even the Chisora version gives AJ and Wilder problems. Uh, what well, uh, J J one two four says ha? It's been the best training camp ever, says every boxer. Yeah, well, Hay says, but Hay says it all the time. This is the best possible version. If you just said, you know what, this is the best possible version of myself in two thousand eighteen, I'd get it. I think it'd be fair. But he's saying his best possible version ever. It's a bit hard to believe. Now, there, there's some other things I thought about last night. Um, Bellew in his mindset um does he think does he believe he's fought the best david hay ever when he um, fought the night? he well i believe he does well see i think he gets caught in the idea that he beat david hay too much he does that he will not consider other things you know because, well, Bailey wants, as anybody, he wants recognition. Mm -hmm. And sometimes by having that magic wand, you know, win over uh, Hay, he can look, overlook the fact that uh, that David Hay is not exactly the best version ever. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. That's very true. Feeling kind of cold. I'll be back in half a minute. Okay. See you in a minute. All right. Cool. So we're still talking about David Hay versus Tony Bellew. One of the things that, that, that are in my mind, that stick in my mind, is the mentality of Tony Bellew. Does he believe that he's fought the best David Hay? Does he believe he's prepared to fight the best David Hay? And is he motivated to beat the best David Hay? Because remember the first fight, Bellew's motivation was he wanted to prove he could beat David Hay. That was his motivation. And he went to go home to his kids, his wife and kids. Or his go home. Yeah, well, I'm sure his wife and kids or his, his missus and kids. That's what it was. To get home safely. Those are his motivations. And he says now, it doesn't matter what happens now, I've beat you. So going into that, going to mindset, with that mindset, going into the fight now, does that give Hay opportunities? I'm just asking people here. Does that give mm -hmm. Hay opportunities? When he said, even after, even if I lose this fight, I have still won. If he really believes that, then wow. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So if he gets splattered in the first round, he'll say, well, I beat him in the first fight. You know, so I, I just, I'm not sure. I don't know where this is going with Bellew. I really don't. Um, and and where does the winner go from here? If Hay looks good. And he and he blows belly away that people the way people expected him to do. Do people want to see him then go on and fight? I, I heard this story about him fighting a Dillian White for a diamond belt. Is that real or is that just Twitter talk? Isn't Dillian White ordered to fight no, Luis Ortiz though? That's what I thought. That's what I heard. No, yeah, that's what I heard. It is. Yeah, or, it's a little... or Kubrat Pulev actually. No, Kubrat. Oh yeah, that was for IBF. Yeah. So Kubrat Pulev, and, and they're trying to get Dillian White and Kubrat Pulev to fight. Mm. That's better. Let me get the camera down. That's better. There we go. Nice. See, I I think Pulev might not go for Dillian White and instead try to get uh, Wendo and Char. But they're negotiating at the moment, though. <sighs> but they were negotiating with uh, AJ, and then they kind of flipped and not weren't pushing anymore for the mandatory position you know okay. things like they're not in a rush that's what i feel like but just keep checking see what people are saying things 
So, what are your thoughts on, on who do you think who you think wins this fight? In your opinion, Eugene? If, 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 right? Hay is uh, the you know the proper hay. I don't see. What, what, I don't what, see... what is the proper hay? At what time are we talking the proper hay? Where's where's Hay's peak to mark his proper hay? For example, the one that doesn't doesn't breathe like Sin Bernard after six rounds. That would be good. That would be that would be typical Hay because he can't <laughs> pull out his ass. Yeah, <laughs> if he's oh. there, you know, if it's Hay that uh, is ready to go twelve rounds, even not like fresh as you know. Yeah. Uh, in every round, but if he's ready for the distance uh, and, you know, with his mindset being, you know, separated from the whole idea that he needs this win over value and value is put in, you know, he needs to come into the arena with one goal, you know, to box and win. Because he, he cannot have uh, those extra thoughts to pile up on him. Do you know what? I have to say, I... I don't see Dave. I've never seen David Hay as a boxer. Never, never. Have I, you seen Bellew? Bellew's a boxer. Hay's not mm. a boxer. Hay, Hay's a he's a, a sharpshooter, a sniper. He doesn't. He, he you, you won't hear a commentator say, "And Hay's doubling up the jab and he's he's <laughs> winning the fight behind the jab." You'll never hear that. You'll always hear, "Oh, big right hand from Hay." <laughs> Hey, because that's what he does. He he just launches in with big shots. He doesn't know a jab. Yeah, I mean, he but does when he shots. does that, huh? he intimidates. When he does that, he intimidates his opponent, right? Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He, he, right thinks, he gives you something to think over in, instead of you know just sticking jab in his face all the time. Yeah, that that's hey. I I don't I can't imagine hey winning a fight on points behind a left jab. I just. No, that is not happening. That is no, no, not what I talk about when I'm saying he's going to be boxing, you know. If he's winning this fight on points, it's by big right hands that hey, Benny's walking onto. Like, so big... instead of jab, you know, he's going to be right hand. <laughs> 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 Winging punches over like a fast bowler. Yeah. yeah. Like, you're chucking boulders. That's what it is. So I can't, I, there's no, the science behind Hay has always been about feints. And fast twitches. Now, at the age of 37, can he still have those fast twitches? And can he still do those things quickly for 12 rounds at a pace? You know, can he do that still? I say no, because he hasn't been active. Well, hold on. I would give him a chance if he was, like, fighting every four months or something. Say, okay, he has timing and, you know... Like, Oh, everything, you know, reflexes, everything in check because he has been fighting. But what was the last fight? Last. Uh... The last real fight David Hay was in, and I, I said it on my show, the last real fight David Hay was in was 2012 against Derek Chisora. That was his last real fight. Since then, the next fight he had was against Tony Bellew. That's mm -hmm. it. That's it. 2012 was his last fight. July the 14th. That was his last big fight. Where he had a guy coming at him. And after five rounds, he was blowing out his ass. And that was that was as close to peak David Hay you're going to get. That's 2012. We're in bloody 2018. Do you know when I look at David Hay? And it's the thing that's always goes off in the back of my mind when I'm looking at David Hay. Have you seen my eye? The amount of wrinkles he's got on his eyes. Mm. <laughs> Have you seen that? It looks like he's had Botox pumped into his eyes. I don't know if anyone else has seen that. He looks really old. Like, he looks like a guy who's done lots and lots and lots and lots of hard partying, right? But still okay. got physique. But he's done loads and loads of Hollywood partying. You know where somebody's got that used look? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, kind of that... When you kind of like a rag, <laughs> yeah. When you know you you've been partying hard, you've been you've been womanizing, you've been living the life. 
His face looks like a guy who's been through Hollywood and back. And he's got like, he's had marks. He's got Botox in his eyes and all sorts of stuff. I don't know if it's me, but I'm, that's what I see in his face. He looks old, he does. He really does. But here is what I was saying is that uh, I would say he could do that if those, you know, previous, um, uh, what is it, requirements were in that he was fighting in real fights, you yeah. know, getting his, but we haven't seen anything like it. So to say that he would be really sharp, mm, mm. Nah, he probably catches value with some good shots, maybe by TKO. I just can't see, I can't, you tell me where you've seen a fight where David Hay doesn't launch haymakers. Silence. Exactly. <laughs> crickets, crickets. Fight, uh, David Hay doesn't go chucking out big bombs from, he just doesn't. So I guess this this crap about well I'm gonna box and I'm gonna take my time and break him down. What David Hayes gonna try and be a boxer now at 38 years old? Come on, I don't think so. It's like you know it's like if you it's like when people talk me tell me crap about oh we're gonna see the best of Adrian Broner now. Adrian Broner was done. His career's been he's been exposed as a fighter because what he does he was a he was a he was a bully in the lower weight divisions. Now he's at welterweight. He can't walk guys down the same way because they're bigger than himself. So they're pushing him back. That's why Broner is ineffective in the welterweight division. But people are expecting to put on this great performance now. Not happening. The post-fight uh, talk in the ring when he was saying to... What was the guy name? Uh, Vargas. The one with, uh, huh? Vargas. Vargas, yeah. When he was like, look at your face, fool. <laughs> yeah, look at his face. He has a turkey neck. <laughs> like you well, could have launch he, and take him out of there. What are you talking about? You know? He's got to say these things to sell a fight and to, to sell a potential second fight and to keep him still in the boxing relevance. That's what he's got to say that crap because really he didn't look that. You looked okay, but you weren't great. So people who are joining us now, we're just talking. Hey, Bellew. Uh, let's see what people are saying in the room. Uh, Bob Silas says, "Hey, looks like he has AIDS." <laughs> Well, first of all, you cannot obtain a boxing uh, license with it. So, <laughs> if, <laughs> well, um, so maybe he has been doing something that makes you look like you have AIDS. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, was one of the biggest punches in the division. There, what? There's a reason why he throws bombs. And maybe that's all he has. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's all it is. I mean, like, if you not being funny about David Hay, honestly, if you were to break him, if you were to break David Hay down, his attributes were speed, power, uh, fast reflexes, and set traps. That's David Hay. And you know that what is, else? Well, wow. those are attributes mostly, like, most effectively utilized by younger fighter. Exactly. So unless David Hay can somehow reinvent his style he's stuck he's got a problem and at 30s that's the thing that's that's why guys like Bellew and Hopkins could go on for a long time because they don't they they their their style is around good boxing fundamentals jab right hand left hook uppercuts they throw everything orthodox they're not rely they not rely on speed and reflexes they can mm -hmm. still throw those punches and still be effective so a, a style like Belly's, and a lot of people are going to like me saying this, but his style is far more, it, it will last for a longer duration of time. Guys like Roy Jones Jr., David Hay being another one of them type of guys, uh, anybody who's using speed and reflexes and not a good boxing base, they get found out as they get older because the speed and reflexes are gone and they try and move the same way as they did when they were like 10 years younger. And they get clipped with shots they wouldn't normally get clipped with. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so they get tired. The things they got away with when they were younger, all them bad habits come out now. So you've seen the way how um, Roy Johns got clipped numerous occasions, you know, um, coming down in weight from heavyweight down to light heavyweight in such a short space of time didn't help the matter. Um, but you see, that's why guys at like Hopkins can still do what they're doing, fiddle around, because they've got good boxing fundamentals. I don't think David Hayes ever had good boxing fundamentals. I just think he's had tremendous power and speed. Mm -hmm. Does he still? 
Oh, power, yeah, he still has power, but speed, that might not be enough. Not as much speed as he would want. Yeah, so... So, yeah, um, what are your final thoughts on Hay versus Bellew? Okay, either... Okay, considering this, stamina issues and the whole idea with the, uh, you know, getting Bellew out of there because he's not a boxer, I would say if, if Hay wins, he needs to win it pretty early by round eight and getting him with good shots. Like, as, as fight would go through, you know, it would go longer, Bellew would have more advantages. And as, uh, you know, Mr. Bashir was saying it, Bellew can get him out of there even more convincingly. If he doesn't go his way early, then it's pretty much it. Is there any possibility David could go out there and drop him like how he dropped uh, John Ruiz? Or is that gone? I think he could if he's fresh. That's it. If he's fresh, he can, he can do that. If, uh, if he doesn't do it early, then no, I don't think so. What I wonder is how much of the injuries restricted his punching power? Hmm... Because I said the same thing about Keith Thurman. And he's another mm. one that likes to throw boulders. Thurman and Hay. I remember talking to Thurman about it early in his career. I mm. said, you remind me so much of David Hay. It's unbelievable. He said, yeah, man. People tell me that. I said, but it's not for the right reasons. He said, what do you mean, man? I said, because you and Hay throw punches the same way, like cavemen at times. <laughs> you throw punches like... <laughs> I swear, no. He throw, they throw punches like they should be... Playing cricket, you know, like a cricket ball, a cricket ball bowls the ball over. Mm -hmm. That's how they throw punches. Some of them punches that I've seen Hay throw and Thurman throw, they, and and from how wide they come from, them punches should only be in video games. So there is a reason why they're called haymakers. <laughs> 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 yeah, but it's just, I mean, I mean, if you get tagged with them shots, oh, woo. Yeah, but if you don't. You're just losing oh. stamina and it's, it's it. and, and 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 the one thing was I remembered when Hay fought Klitschko and the one thing that Manu Stewart said about the Hay style, stick a jab on him and he's got problems because his legs are so far apart. So you know, so you're you're saying Hay has to knock Bell you out early. Mm -hmm. Well, there's some people back for Hay to win on points. That's interesting. Okay, I would like to hear that. Like, I want to hear the breakdown of how he boxes to round twelve and wins rounds against Bellew. Well, I, well, if we look at the first fight when Hay was loading the big bombs, and he was looking reckless then, he was winning. He was winning rounds, looking terrible. Okay, and. At, at which point he stopped winning rounds. Wait, wait, I, I, I'm not, I'm not saying he can win by. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, 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 I'm definitely. Just, I'm just suggesting. Yeah. You know. Okay, I, I'm taking it. At which point it didn't work anymore. What's that? Uh, at which point it didn't work anymore. He was winning rounds until he wasn't right, and his injured Achilles was still there from early rounds to early, late rounds, right? So, yeah, if he can win rounds, definitely. And like, as I'm saying, he will come if he comes out of uh, there early and starts launching bombs, he will probably win those rounds. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't work early, then, you know, it, it will cost him. Well, one of the things about Hay supporters, if you talk to a Hay support, you ask a Hay a support, <laughs> okay. When was Hayes' peak? Tell me what Hayes' peak is. Because at 37 or 38, that can't be your peak. That cannot be your peak as a sportsman. Where, where's your peak? I would say at cruiserweight. A cruiserweight? Yeah. Not a heavyweight when he fought... Well, yeah, cruiserweight or when he fought Ruiz? Maybe when he fought Valuev? Or when he fought Chisora? Okay, but what time that was? 
Well, exactly. Go down. So if people are saying, okay, so 2012, you fought Derek Chisora, right? Yeah, 2024, yeah. Chisora. No. That was in 2012. It doesn't cut it. No, if the last time you looked good was six years ago, it doesn't cut it. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. They, you, you, you define logic there. As, and, and not only do you define logic saying you're better at 37 than you were when you were in the prime years that defies logic one and with all the injuries as well and the thing is it's what you do outside the ring is more of you know you could put on 10 years in your career by having a a, a, a sort of like a very uh extensive extra curriculum outside of boxing you know what i mean yeah partying 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 that takes it out of your body yeah that's actually one of the things i was thinking about uh, fury because i'm kind of interested in him coming back because well i want to have a way to keep living you know it's not like a he's not hey he's not like a bernard hopkins i'm not, nothing against the way david lives his life but those things must be brought into question when you're looking at a guy of that mm -hmm. age He's 37, but he's even more 47 because of what he's been doing outside the ring. Uh, I mean, he is clean living. Well, so he says he's a vegan or I don't know. But these things do have to count and the, the injuries as well. Yeah. Well, that's uh, if I'm not mistaken and correct me if I'm wrong, because I haven't been around boxing for that long, but. I think Mayweather re revised his style because he had injuries. Like he couldn't. Yep. So he had his hands broken, you know. And at some point he thought, well, I cannot do this anymore, but I need to, you know, approach this smart uh, in a smart way. But I don't see K doing that. K is going to come out with whatever he's got, Bye. whatever he's got left. Yep, Barry Watt says there's actually a lot of value in Hay to win early on. Everyone is betting mid to late rounds. And then J124 says Hay needs to come out and blitz Bellew in rounds one to four to be impressive and noticeable. I agree. And then Barry Watt says Hay only here for the money. Let's be honest, Hay probably wins. It makes sense for Bellew. And Hearn too, because they can hype up a decider fight. Nah, come on. They they have options with value. Really? Yeah. Options with what? They can. Uh, well, God, I it, don't see value coming after uh, heavyweight champions. I don't. It's no. Well, okay. No. Value versus Joshua. Who the hell wants to see that? Really, honestly, no, who wants no. to see that? I would rather go to the slaughterhouse. A Bellew versus Wilder. Oh, I'd like to see. I'd watch that actually. I would watch that one. What for? <laughs> <laughs> the same reason you would watch Bellew versus Kassev. Yeah, well, at least it's kind of like a, the same size, you know. Here, the it's like someone standing on top of CN Tower and launching wait, 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 punches Benny, down. Benny, Benny thinks he fancies chances against Tony, uh, against uh, Tyson Fury. Yeah, and also he says that he would box uh, for a few, like, nine, eight rounds against Usyk and then knock him out, you know. He would find a good shot to, to do that. But he says whatever he wants to say, you know. It's, uh, his options are uh, get some tractions with cruisers, go back, if he still wants to keep fighting after um, uh, Hey, because I think back, uh, like, one year ago, he was talking about retiring. Yep, 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 yep. You say this is his last fight and this and that. But then again, he says a lot of things. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I see him having more success with either small heavyweights or cruiserweights. Do you know what I think is going to be a damn shame? That Hay actually gives it his best shot in training, has done everything right, he's dedicated himself to the fight, and then come fight night, he's just got old. And all those years wasted, be it injury, K 
cancellation, pullouts, and all the rest of the palaver, that the one night that he puts it all together, trains really hard. Like, not to say he hasn't trained hard in the past, but mm -hmm. he's given a good go. He's done everything right. He's got his head in the right spot, and he, and he does everything correctly. And he goes out and tries to fight on fight night and just finds out that he's a shadow of his own self. Yeah, and hear the bell toll and like boom. You know what I mean? And I, I remember I, I remember watching Nigel Ben fight um Steve Collins. I'll always remember mm -hmm. and Sorry. how people will say you expected Ben to win that fight. It was a shadow of himself. Once he fought McLennan, he was never the same fighter. McLennan really beat the crap out of of, of Ben, the stuffing out of him. Even though Ben went on to win by knockout, it was such a grueling fight. And Ben was in the latter stages of his career, you know. Um, and Ben never made a fight easy unless he knocked you out in the first couple. He never made a fight easy. He always got in tough fights. So by the time he got on to fight Steve Collins, it was a shadow himself. I think Ben twisted his ankle in one of the fights. And then the rematch, he had to retire in his stall. It was just sad to see such a, a really good fighter that has given us so many good nights of boxing, like just bow out like that. And the the, the one thing in my the back of my mind, when I look at David Hay, I think to myself, you know what? You're 37 years old. You look like David Hay, but there's a such thing as old father time. And that doesn't have mercy on anybody. Mm -hmm. And we knew he was blown out of his ass against Chisora. And that was a big fight. And there was a lot on the line, a big fight at the time. I think the winner was going to fight. With, I think the winner was going to fight with Tali because, yeah, I think that was the case. And, you know, he, he was blown out of his ass because Chisora put the pressure on him for five rounds. Yes, he got rid of Chisora, but that was back in 2012. And even in this fight now with Belly, the second fight, he still looked you know, like he's still blown out of his ass for the second fight, as well, for, for the fight against Belly as well. So I don't know. I just don't know. If Hayes going to do it, if, Hay, if Hayes going to do this fight, I think he's got to do it in the first six rounds for me. I agree. That's what I'm saying. I mean, Early or nothing. If he, if he, okay, if he's going past six rounds, if he's giving Belly a complete battering from round one to round date then maybe people say okay maybe so but i mean if you're thinking about being the giants of the heavyweight division the joshua's the wilders he needs to hit belly on the chin and render him unconscious within the first four rounds honestly mm -hmm. he needs to do that's what he needs to do if he wants to put himself in the heavyweight window of you know super fights yeah, but I don't see it happening. Like, even if he wins, I see him having a really short span. Like, I think one more year and that's it, if he wins. Because it just seems like he, you know, wasted too much time. And now, it's you know, there is, um, there is a saying, uh, I don't know if you have it, but back at home, people saying that before the apple tree, dies it gives the biggest harvest ever yes you know so he can do whatever but then and hey he's gone you know he retires and you think this, could, you think this could be the last big fight in david Hayes' career oh yeah and even if he secures some good fight and we hear that he gets another injury what now okay. are we are we looking at the last chapter in david Hayes' career that's a question is this the last so. time we're going to see David Hay in the ring? Yeah, it's uh, it's the last year, I believe. You think Maybe so? Maybe he will have, if he wins, he will have another fight to them this year, and I don't think he will go further. And Tony Bellew? Is this the last year of Tony Bellew? <sighs> Who the hell knows? Tony Bellew does. Tony Bellew is still relatively young. He's what, 32, oh, 33? 31. 31. Yeah. So he's if he's retiring, he's not retiring because of age. And winning second time against Hay, again, he's not going to be saying that I didn't beat uh, the Hay that wasn't Hay of the past, right? He would have convincing two victories over you know, David Hay so he can try himself. 
somewhere. Would he then be considered the greatest cruiserweight in British boxing? Nah. No. Well, not not on my list. Sorry, no. <laughs> Why? Uh, well, if this fight happened at cruiserweight when Pay was whooping ass at cruiserweight, yeah, okay, sure. But you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, beating uh, Roy Jones at cruiserweight, you know. And say that you, when he's forty something, and then say you're a greatest light heavyweight of all time or whatever. I expect it to come out of his mouth or something like that. So uh, yeah, I I think uh, same thing as before. Bel- Hayes got a win within the first. I'll give Bel- Hayes seven rounds to stop Bellew. Mm-hmm. I think so. He's got a win by stoppage, and Bellew. You know, but for him, to, the way David has to do that is by plenty of feints. He's got to draw belly forward and let him use that big right hand that he likes to lose. He used to use that right hand. If he can slip that right hand and land something of his own hard, that's what I think he has to do. Because belly's right hand is, is there. It's slow and it's not accurate at times. Possibly, but they, hey, he can get into that. As for belly, I think belly has got to walk, keep walking, David, putting the jab in David's face. And walking David back, walking him back, walking him back, putting pressure on David, forcing David to fight at a, a, a pace. Even if he's just walking David down, putting a pace on David that he doesn't like. So belly has got to start at a fast pace and mean to go on and push David, push him for the first five to six rounds and see if David wants it, if David really fancies it. Landing lots of nice body shots as well. Take the steam out of David Hay. You know, get him against, mm-hmm. push him against ropes, push him back against ropes. The, the more more Belly can push Hay back against the ropes, the less chance Bet Hay's got of getting that leverage to land them big winging shots. Push it back against the ropes, force it back against the ropes, and work body shots. Make it an inside fight, really grueling fight. They can tie mm-hmm. Hay out, lots of holding, lots of wrestling, lots of mauling. Lean on them. See if you can cut him as well. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's another thing people need to be aware of. Cuts on David Hay as well. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we were talking a lot about how David Hay needs to win against Bailey, and it's kind of like <laughs> we're not talking about uh, Bailey to so win against. Balance, I've, even, I've, even give, I've given you a Bailey uh, breakdown as well. Oh, Bailey's thirty-five. There you go, he's thirty-five. Why did oh, I? Think, yeah. Why did I think Bailey was thirty-one? Or was that somebody else I was listening to the other day talk? Yeah, Bellew is 35, correct. Okay. So, yeah, Bellew is 35. You underestimated his age by a lot. Bellew is old as well. There you go. He's 35. Well, he's not old, but he's approaching that point, you know. Yeah, where... yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, of course. I don't know why I thought Bellew was 30. Who, who the hell's 31 then? Well, I think, who was it? Um, the British uh, heavyweight. The just turned pro. Oh, Joe Joyce. Yeah, I think he's thirty-one or thirty-two. Is he? Might be. I oh. don't really know. Yeah, Joyce is fighting uh Leroy Thomas. What do you think of the fight? Well, as I was saying previously, when you had me on, is that I've seen Leroy Thomas fight against David Allen, and it was, and that fight ended in one round because of a headbutt. So it was like, um, you see the first fight. No, no, I didn't. Okay, well, it's quite simple. For Lenroy Thomas to win this fight, he's got to break Joe Joyce down. And there's no point in him saying, yeah, well, you know, we're going to take him to the deep end and, and drown him. I hate when fighters say that. Do you know why I hate when they say that? It's because they are guaranteeing that their chin their punching, and their punching resistance is going to get them into the second half of the fight. I mean, you, you don't just take people the second half of the fight. You've got to make sure that you're there for the second half of the fight. And you've also got to ensure that you're there in the second half of the fight and it's not you on the receiving end of blows. But you can mm-hmm. be the second half of the fight, but you could be under a shellacking. You could be the end of taking right hands and left hooks and be on the verge of getting knocked out yourself. So what has to happen for, for Lenroy Thomas for him to retain the title? He has to ensure that he's landing lots of body shots early on, on Joyce. Not allow Joyce to get any sort of momentum, take him into the second half of the fight, land in body shots, and then come on strong in the second half of the fight and really push it on Joyce. 
But he's got to make sure when all that is happening, two things are happen. He don't get knocked out himself, one. And two, he needs to ensure that he's not at the halfway point, six rounds down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if he's six rounds down in the first half. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, then you, you know, you know. Turning the tide clean is kind of difficult. Yeah, so when I hear fighters say that, it always rings alarm bells. I'm like, yeah, we're going to take him in the second half of the fight and drown him. A lot of people I've heard say that and see themselves getting knocked out in the first four or five rounds. Because their mentality is, well, we're going to take this into the second half of the fight. The mentality is they're going in second half of the fight. While the guy that's there fighting is thinking, you know what? You ain't going to see the second half of the fight. I'm taking you out as quick as possible because I don't want to see the second half of the fight. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So it's interesting. Uh. What are your thoughts on this weekend with a uh, Golovkin fighting? I don't even know if I'm gonna stick for the main card. Now I will probably watch Cecilia Brakas on HBO and then be over it. What? <laughs> Why? I'm not giving Martiresian many chances, and you know he's there to fill the gap. That's what, what I feel like. He's moving one division up and against the guy who has been training all this time. But what about the fact that he might bring speed and movement? Okay, what about timing? He hasn't been fighting all this time. Speed and movement is great, but, you know. Sugar Ray Leonard, he, ca he came out of retirement and fought for a long time and, and took on the great Marvin Hagler and shot Marvin Hagler. Sugar Ray <laughs> I know. I, I, <laughs> I, oh, let me tell you about someone. <laughs> I'm not correct. I, first of all, let's get something much straight. I am not comparing Vanis to Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> but I'm only saying he was out for, was it, a few years and he came back and he called out Hagler. Okay. They called out Hagler and Hagler mm -hmm. was a beast. And people, he was meant to run up, Hagler was meant to run right through him. And we saw what Leonard did. So, yeah, but then again, you need that sugar way Leonard skill set. <laughs> yeah, Martin Sun has everything but sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but hold on. Bo said to me his best, his best uh, sugar Ray Leonard video uh, video ever is the one with sugar Ray Leonard trying to pull pull himself out the ropes after Camacho knocked him through it. That's his best sugar Ray Leonard memory. That's what Bo said. That's not good, is it? No. No, it isn't. <laughs> yeah, so, no. What I'm saying is that um, I, I'm, I'm trying to sell this fight. I know for you to watch it. I mean, mm -hmm. Maris may call that sensation. He may have boxed Golovkin for 12 rounds. Right. He's never been okay. knocked out. Remember, that's what they say. He's never been knocked out. Okay. Um, okay, he can get Golovkin for 12 rounds. Yeah. If he's just going to move. He might lose the fight, but he's going to look uh, make Golovkin look serious as hell. You because, think so? Yeah, because he, Golovkin needs someone to stand yeah. in front of him for a little while to plant. You know, to, to land some shots. And if the guy is going to be just in a survival mode, the problem will be that the only person who looks bad in that fight is Golovkin. I've said this. I've said this a thousand and one times. Golovkin needs guys to come at him to look great. And my concern is if that, if Vanis starts moving and being defensive and not wanting to engage with Golovkin, in that there might be a problem. He needs someone, uh, that guy who fought Charlo, that uh, was willing to trade a little bit, you know? Who's that? Well, Charlo was fighting recently, right? And yeah, yeah, got yeah. a knockout. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that guy, yeah. yeah that, he's, that he is... decided to stand there and trade a little bit, and then he was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> he needs that guy. He, they need to call him, cancel Martirez, and nobody cares. <laughs> Who was the brain trust behind that decision? 
It's like, you're moving. That's smart. Do that against Charlo. Keep moving and don't stop. Yeah. Keep moving. <laughs> no, I'm not moving. I'm going to stand and train with Charlo. Right. Okay. Well, you'll do that once and you'll never do it again. <laughs> Listen. I'm going to be stoic like a pillar. Oh, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ask that about that and fight, Charlie. He, he's, you see, he's a hype job. He's a hype job. Uh -huh. I'll his hype job. I'll test him out. And then what happens? Gets taken out. Don't ask, uh, don't ask Abel about him anytime, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Charlie, cool. cool. I'm yeah. having trouble hearing. Sorry, I'm having trouble yeah, he's hearing. About, he talks about Ryan Garcia as well. <laughs> Connection lost. Having trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ryan Garcia said that Ryan Garcia <coughs> <coughs> needs to be tested. And I agree with Abel on that point. Okay. That Ryan Garcia needs to be tested. Uh, the young guy, the 19. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and he's already talking about fighting Tank. Oh boy. Yeah. I'm not advising to do that. <laughs> not from some of the stories I've been hearing. I would not advise him to be doing that. Yeah, if he wants to test his, you know, health insurance, then yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he should not get there because the last fight Tank had, he did everything right. Yeah, exactly. Do you really want Tank? What? How do you think that fight would go? Bad. I think Tats got ripped to shreds. At this point in his life, no. It's a, it's a big no. No, 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 no. No, keep no. it. Whoever puts those thoughts in, in your head, you know, you just shrug them off. They're not worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, after end this, because I've got to do that interview with uh, Beyonce's former manager in 10 minutes. So right. I have to be here. All right? So, thank you all for watching. Again, once again, massive thank you to my man. Eugene from the Eastern European Boxing. Hey, we've got to sort something out there. We've got to stop calling you the man from Eastern European Boxing. We've got we'll to figure something out. We've got to do, we've got to find something else <laughs> because Eastern European is just not. We've got to find something else. You you come up with a name, man, because yeah, I already have the title undefeatable. Now I need a name. Yeah, got to find a name because I can't. The, that bloke that does the Eastern European stuff. We've got to do something different. Yeah, but you have to come back to me about it. Right, thank you all so much, Eugene, as always. Great top stuff from Eugene. Thank you to you guys and girls that have been watching. I'm out of here now. Join us over on BWTM News. Within the next 10 to 15 minutes, we'll be getting the latest news on the Destiny Charles documentary that's coming out. It's meant, I think, from what I hear, stories get, it's coming out on release on Amazon Direct in Germany. That's the first thing. The second thing is we'll be talking about Beyonce and potentially... Uh, Destiny's Charles Reunion and lots more to come. So, BWTM News, check it out. Go up to Google. We're there. We start in about 10 minutes. See you all soon. Take care.